26. Between Bribery and Torture The Quraysh then began bargaining and exploring other solutions. They began negotiating with the Prophet directly, offering a compromise. One such attempt was the offer to share religions. They proposed that Allah alone be worshipped one day, and the idols be worshipped the next day, alternating between the two. There is, of course, no compromise in the oneness of Allah. And Allah revealed Surah Al-Kafirun. Say, O you disbelievers, I do not worship what you worship, nor do you worship what I worship. I will never worship what you worship, nor will you ever worship what I worship. You have your way, and I have my way. Surah 109, verses 1 to 6. As previously mentioned, the Quraysh did worship Allah. And yet Allah instructs the Prophet to say, I do not worship what you worship, because worshiping Allah through intermediaries is shirk, polytheism, nullifying the worship in its entirety. The Quraysh then asked what the Prophet wanted in order to cease. The Prophet replied that he wanted one statement from them, to which Abu Jahl replied ecstatically, We will give you ten. The Prophet revealed the statement to be the Islamic declaration of faith, There is no God but Allah. They responded as described by Allah in the Quran. Has he reduced all the gods to one God? Indeed, this is something totally astonishing. Surah 38 verse 5 When offers of compromise failed, the Quraysh resorted to outright bribery. Utbah ibn Rabia, a distant uncle of the Prophet, approached him on behalf of the Quraysh. He said, O oh my nephew, you know your lineage and status. You are the grandson of Abd al-Mutalib and the son of Abdullah. You have come forward with a matter that has wreaked havoc on our people. O oh Muhammad, are you better than Abd al-Mutalib? Are you better than Abdullah? The Prophet did not respond as there is no wisdom in replying to a loaded rhetorical question. Utbah continued, We have never seen a young man as promising as you flip around so suddenly and bring so much harm to our people. The Arabs are mocking us, you are creating disunity, and we are on the precipice of civil war. We have a number of suggestions that may interest you. If you are interested in money, I have the power of the Quraysh vested in me to offer you more money than any of us have and you shall be the richest Arab. If you want power, we will make you our king. And if you want women, choose any woman that you want, and we will ensure that she marries you. If you think you are ill, we will hire doctors to cure you. Embodying true wisdom and respect, the Prophet waited until he finished and replied, Are you done, O Abu al-Walid? Utbah replied in the affirmative, and the Prophet said, Now listen to me. He then began reciting, I seek refuge in Allah from the accursed devil. Refuge is sought from Allah before one recites the Quran, referred to as the Istiaja. In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, most merciful. One begins every surah in the name of Allah, referred to as the Basmala. Ha! Meem! This is a revelation from the most compassionate, most merciful. It is a book whose verses are perfectly explained, a Qur'an in Arabic for people who know, delivering good news and warning, yet most of them turn away so they do not hear. They say, our hearts are veiled against what you are calling us to. There is deafness in our ears, and there is a barrier between us and you. So do whatever you want, and so shall we. Say, I am only a man like you, but it has been revealed to me that your God is only one God. So take the straight path towards him and seek his forgiveness. And woe to the polytheists, those who do not pay zakah, alms tax, and are in denial of the hereafter. But those who believe and do good will certainly have a never-ending reward. Ask them, how can you disbelieve in the one who created the earth in two days? How can you set up equals with him? That is the Lord of the worlds. He placed on the earth firm mountains, standing high, showered his blessings upon it, and ordained all its means of sustenance, completing four days exactly for all who ask. Then he turned towards the heaven when it was still like smoke, saying to it and to the earth, Submit willingly or unwillingly. They both responded, We submit willingly. So he formed the heaven into seven heavens in two days, assigning to each its mandate. And we adorned the lowest heaven with stars like lamps for beauty and protection, that is the design of the Almighty, all-knowing, 
If they turn away, then say, I warn you of a mighty blast like the one that befell Ad and Thamud. Surah 41, verses 1 to 12. Prior to this conversation, and like most of the Quraysh, Utbah had not actually listened to the Quran with intent. As the Prophet continued reciting, Utbah's expression began to change, and as the power of the recitation and tempo began to intensify, he started palpitating. It continued to increase in power and intensity until it rose to a crescendo with the verse, If they turn away, then say, I warn you of a mighty blast like the one that befell Ad and Thamud. Surah 41, verses 1 to 12. At which point Utbah could not take it any longer and jumped up, forcibly putting his hand over the blessed mouth of the prophet, pleading, I beg you by Allah, and by the rights I have over you as a blood relative, stop, and not to send this punishment. He then turned and ran back to the Quraysh from whom he came, and said, Listen to me, leave this man alone, because I have heard a speech from him which I have never heard before. I could not comprehend all of it, but he will hold importance in the world. If the Arabs get rid of him for us, our hands are clean. But if he is victorious over the Arabs, then by Allah his victory is our victory, and his power is our power. This is not the first time that the Quraysh made such a statement about not comprehending all of the Quran. Some scholars explain that this was due to some complicated words, but in truth, the words were not particularly complicated. Rather, it was due to their entrenchment in shirk clouding their comprehension of pure, unadulterated truth. The Quraysh dismissed his advice, remarking, He has bewitched you, like he bewitched everybody else. The Quraysh then turned to a nation more experienced in dealing with prophethood. Although remnants of the religion of Ibrahim were present in Mecca, most notably through the presence of the Kaaba, his prophetic teachings were largely forgotten, and the concept of prophethood was now foreign to them. The Jews and Christians, on the other hand, retained their history of prophethood. Their teachings had been distorted and corrupted, but the people of the book that is Abrahamic religions were still familiar with the idea of prophethood and the role of a prophet or messenger. Two of the worst of the Quraysh, Uqba ibn Abi Mu'ayt and Al-Nadir ibn Harith, approached the Jews in Medina and asked for ways to quiz and catch out the prophet. One instruction was to ask the prophet about prophets Ishaq, Yaqub, and Yusuf, particularly about what happened to the family of Yaqub. The Quraysh asked the Prophet and Allah revealed the entirety of Surah Yusuf as a response. On another occasion, they instructed the Quraysh to ask the Prophet three questions, adding, No one would know the answers to these three questions except a true Prophet. The three questions were, Number one, ask him about the young men who slept in the cave and slept a long time. Number two, ask him about the man who traveled the world from the east to the west, what experiences are now legends. Number three, Ask him about the Ru, spirit, soul. Where does it come from? The prophet responded confidently, I will inform you of what you have asked about tomorrow. However, because the prophet was confident that Allah would respond, he forgot to say, Inshallah, if Allah wills. As a result, revelation did not descend the next day, but rather, after two long weeks. The Quraysh began to mock the Prophet after revelation did not descend the following day as promised. They would provoke him. Muhammad promised us that he would inform us the next day. Two weeks have passed and he has not informed us of anything. Allah reminded the Prophet and the believers at large as to the relationship between the Lord and his slave. Allah is the one who plans in his infinite wisdom. It should be noted that being referred to as a slave of Allah is the highest praise not a derogatory remark. Allah refers to the Prophet as his slave five times. Yet when the slave of Allah stood up calling upon him alone, the pagans almost swarmed over him. Surah 72 verse 19. Glory be to the one who took his slave by night. Surah 17 verse 1. Blessed is the one who sent down the standard to his slave, so that he may be a warner to the whole world. Surah 25 verse 1. All praise is for Allah, who has revealed the book to his slave, allowing no crookedness in it. Surah 18, verse 1. He is the one who sends down clear revelations to his servant to bring you out of darkness and into light. Surah 57, verse 9.
Indeed, there is no honor higher than being a worshiper and a slave of Allah. Allah revealed verses of the Quran as a response to the three aforementioned questions. Details were provided about the people of the cave that even the Jews did not know. Similarly, Allah identified the man with famous expeditions as Zul Karnain. Some people believe that Alexander the Great was Zul Karnain. However, that is patently false, as Alexander the Great was a pagan under the tutelage of the pagan philosopher Aristotle. It seems that he was not identified in Western sources, and there is a difference of opinion amongst the scholars as to whether he was a prophet or just a king. As for the Ru, soul, Allah maintained that it is of the mysteries of knowledge that human beings on earth will never know. They ask you about the Ru, soul. Say, its nature is known only to my Lord, and you, O humanity, have been given but little knowledge. Surah 17, verse 85. The Jews indeed knew that no one has knowledge of the Ru, soul, and so it was a trick question placed alongside two genuine questions in a bid to expose the Prophet. Undeterred, the Quraysh escalated their persecution and began to physically torture the companions. Sa'id ibn Jubayr asked ibn Abbas about the extent of the torture, to which ibn Abbas said, The believers were tortured in the early days of Islam so severely that they were deprived of food and water to the extent that they could not even sit upright. They were tortured until they were asked, Is Alat your God? Is Aluza your God? And answered in the affirmative. Alat and Aluza and Manat were the three chief goddesses worshipped by the Quraysh. They were also referred to as God's daughters.